But after occupying the obscure backwaters of the investment landscape for the better part of the last decade, hedge funds have come a long way towards being used by mainstream retail investors. Recently, drafted legislation has seen the possibility of retail products becoming available in the near future. Here to give us an update on the progress of the industry is Blue Inc's Sinjin Bungie. But before we go there, Warren, you've got a little info for us. Yes, we do, Bronwyn. I just wanted to give a little bit of intro into the hedge fund industry for, uh, for our viewers. It has occupied, as we said, the, the sort of rural backwaters of the uh, investment landscape, and that's because of uh, regulators wanting to make sure that before these products become available to the retail investing public, uh, that everything in terms of compliance and regulation has been dealt with because they are allowed to use leverage and, and they use different trading strategies. So I've just got uh, uh, the first graph here uh, just indicating um, a split of, of the assets under management. The industry has about 30 billion in assets under management at this point. And uh, just to give you a sense of the age, a couple of the funds, as you can see here, uh, the fixed income arbitrage and, and long short uh, equity are the most popular in terms of assets under management. Um, with 16 billion, that's the long short equity uh, managers taking long only positions and using, in many cases, derivatives to short the market. If we just uh, look at the uh, next slide, which uh, gives the performance of uh, the hedge fund industry, you can see it's very much on a par. We look at the uh, long short aggressive portfolios, uh, which over about 10 years have outperformed the all share index. And then you can see some of the conservative strategies like fixed income arbitrage, which is equivalent to the, f the fixed income uh, funds, um, being a little bit more, uh, the return not being as great. And here's a great graph of just the all share index in the blue shadow. Uh, and you can see again there the long short e uh, equity um, hedge funds being quite aggressive and outperforming the, the, the all share index over about 12 years and then some of the other strategies. So they are a bit technical, but uh, I think what we'd like to get going with Sinjin is just to ask him around how do these hedge funds make their uh, money and what are the strategies they employ? Well, Sinjin, it's over to you. How do you make your money, sir? <laughs> well, just a brief, a brief look at Blue Inc. Blue Inc is the hedge fund portal uh, for the Sunlum group. Uh, we're 75% owned by Sunlum and we manufacture hedge, hedge fund product for the Sunlum group. Um, so we make our money by investing into underlying hedge funds, uh, trying to choose which managers we think will outperform, which managers are good, which managers uh, are fly by nights. Um, and Blue Inc has been around since 1999 uh, in that role. Uh, it was acquired by Sunlum in 2007. Just moving on to you know how hedge funds themselves make money, the long short category, as Warren alluded to. Um, go long stocks just like any other unit trust, but they have the ability to short stocks and they have the ability to use leverage. Um, to try and use a very simplistic analogy, um, a hedge fund may, instead of just having a view whether they want to own Anglo-American or own Billiton, may take a view that Anglos is cheaper than Billiton and so they will be long Anglos and short Billiton. And the difference in that is that the bet that they're taking is on the relative performance rather than the absolute direction of a stock or a market. And in hedge fund speak, I'm, I'm going to try and stay away from the jargon, but in hedge fund speak, we, we believe that people's ability to do research on companies and ascertain whether one company will outperform another company has a far higher success rate than simplistically trying to decide whether the market's going up on a, on a particular day or down on a particular day. So hedge funds use strategies like that to arbitrage returns out of the market. They may also take directional posi positions from time to time. So, so uh, Sinjin, in the fixed interest space, Sinjin, just uh, to I come in here, the, yes, just to come in here with the, the relative yes. arbitrage. I, th I think basically, if I'm getting you right, so uh, where you see one company overvalued to another in the same sort of market, uh, hedge funds would would go along one and short the other. And what would happen with the, if, if the market as a whole were to collapse? Are they almost uh, insulated from any move in the market as a whole? On that position, yes. They would be, uh, provided they sold 100 rands worth of Anglos and bought 100 rands worth of uh, Billets and all the other way around, depending on their view. All they need to be right about is which stock outperforms the other. If both stocks fall by 50%, they've lost nothing. If both stocks rise by 50%, they've lost or gained nothing. Um, their pure bet is that the one stock outperforms the other on a relative basis. 
Sinjin, let's, let's focus now on the regulatory aspects of the South African hedge fund mm. industry. Where are we from a reputational perspective? Uh, from a regulation perspective, there are really three angles to regulation. There is uh, regulation of product, there's the regulation around the fund manager itself, and then there is regulation around who may invest. And so if I can cover all of those briefly, um, the first r regulatory discussions have been had in the, in the hedge fund industry since 2003. And uh, they've been like any good economist forecast, they have perpetually remained two years hence. Uh, about three, four years ago, some traction was gained on regula the regulation of fund managers. And with, uh, with the promulgation of phase, um, a new category of asset manager was, re was recognized, the Category 2A license. And a Category 2A license is a hedge fund license and allows you to manage a hedge fund. Um, it has higher capital requirements than a traditional asset management license. And it has higher qualification requirements for the individuals and experience requirements for the individuals. So since 2008, hedge fund managers have been regulated. Um, regulation 28, which is the pension fund guideline regulation, um, was redrafted about two or three years ago. And in the, sub in the subs subsequent redrafts of that, um, the regulation has made allowance for pension funds to invest up to 10% of their assets into hedge funds. So those two areas of, of regulation, there was, there's been quite a lot of, of, of movement. Um, unfortunately, with regards to the regulation of actual products, so let me put this in simplistic terms, for us to have a product akin to a unit trust that we can take to the institutional or retail market, um, that, that continues to remain probably two to three years away. Um, the complexities of having to redraft CISCA, um, the Collective Investment Schemes Control Act, um, are just continually putting sort of spanners in the works. What has happened though is in all the discussions and the, and the negotiations between Treasury, um, the FSB and the industry, there has been a tacit approval I'm just going to bring it back because I know Warren, Warren's got a question he's poised to ask at, at this sure. point. Sinjin, just uh, Warren? Sorry, Sinjin, just to bring it up here, yeah, with, with regards to the allocation, I think it's one angle there with the Regulation 28 Act. Uh, we saw it go up, I think, last year or the year before, the, uh, the amount that uh, the institutions like pension funds can invest. Have, have they taken up the full allocation in the hedge funds, in their hedge fund allocation as yet? Um... Large pension funds with sophisticated consultants, to be honest, had allocated to hedge funds prior to regulation. Um, they had allocated via notes and various structures, and they have remained allocated. We're seeing a slow uptake with the smaller pension funds um, that are self-administered and, and, and trustee-driven. Trustee driven. Um, so I certainly wouldn't say that it's a rush, a, a gold rush, but we've seen consistent inflows this year, and I would expect the trend to continue. Ironically, and I've got to throw this in, the pend this continual talk of pending sort of uh, structure regulation actually pre has prohibited inflows. Because every time we, we talk to trustees of a pension fund who are about to allocate, they say, well, if, if regulation is only a year away, we'll wait. And so, so it's we cast really a, like it's cast a cloud of uncertainty. Conclusion. It's cast a cloud of uncertainty, and we know investors traditionally just don't like any uncertainty. So they'll wait for the clarity, is what you're saying, Sinjin? Uh, yes, except that in the in, in the most recent communication from the FSB and from Treasury, they have clearly stated that the partnership structures, which are most dominant in the hedge fund industry, they recognise the partnership structures being used, and that they will make no attempt to close those structures down um, and that, that they are happy for investors to use them until an alternative is, uh, a more formal alternative is promulgated. In terms of uh, just that, that retail component now, the one that we're talking about, uh, where it's almost a hedge fund light that the FSB was considering bringing to market. Uh, you said that that's still some way off there. I mean, is there going to be a point at some stage in the next few years where, where retail investors will be able to use hedge funds in their portfolios? Look, I'm sure we'll get there in a, in a mass market sense eventually. A lot of uh, eventually you know, sounds US, a long time UK, off, Europe, Sinjin. Eventually sounds <laughs> a long, long time off. Well, you know, forgive me for that, but I, I, I was party to the first meetings between the then Hedge Fund Association and the regulator in 2003, 
and we were assured that regulation would be 18 months away. Uh, I've remained on the various bodies as the names have changed, and, and, and we've never got closer than 18 months. So as I say, it's, a, it's, like, a, it's like a good economist forecast. It, it just never comes to fruition. It's an ever-moving target. <laughs> Sinjin, just to come back um, to... Just to come back to uh, your, your actual role as a fund of fund manager, I mean, you're going and seeing these uh, investment managers. There are risks in, in investing in hedge funds. Uh, I wanted to see, you know, how do you quantify and, and measure how much risk a hedge fund manager is taking in your underlying portfolios where they have leverage that the amount of leverage or, or debt that they can use to make those bets uh, can vary as well. I mean, mm -hmm. surely the risk controls in your game must be a lot more uh, rigid and stringent than uh, a fund of fund manager in a long only equity fund? Uh, yes, uh, exactly. So to answer that, we sit alongside Sunlum's um, traditional multi-manager offering and their transparency levels are probably monthly in terms of portfolios. We all have a risk system on our desk which takes a download from each of the prime brokers every night and I can press a button and look at any of our portfolios, a single manager or any of our clients portfolios and we can see the aggregate positions in terms of leverage, net exposure. Um, we can see all the risk metrics, exposure to sectors, um, betas, um, and we have that on about a sort of seven or eight hour delay. So yes, the risk management is, is a lot more intense in, in our industry and um, we keep a far beadier eye than we would in the, in, in the long environment. Just another question that's asked often about the South African hedge fund industry is how it compares to the international environment. Do we lag significantly? Obviously, you've spoken of you know, the entry point into retail investors still being a long way off, but is there a huge discrepancy between what we're seeing in the international environment and South Africa? Uh, I think you've got to carve that into sort of two questions. So. At the asset level, so are our managers any worse or better? Do they have more skill or less skill? Are they more experienced or less experienced? My opinion, and it's obviously biased, is that the skill levels that we have in South Africa, and I must say that I've run money in Asia and, and in Europe in, in the hedge fund environment, our skill levels here are as good as anywhere in the world. Um, our managers arguably have had to deal with more crises you know, post-1994 than, than, than any developed market manager. So that, that would be the asset side of the, of the balance sheet. On the liability side, so how money gets into hedge funds, I think all jurisdictions are battling with hedge fund regulation. Um, some, some have been a lot more proactive like Australia. Um, in other environments, it's been completely ignored and the entire industry has moved offshore to places like the BVI. So uh, do, we, do we lag? Uh, difficult, question, difficult question to answer on that front. I think every every jurisdiction has its has its issues and its problems uh, we probably certainly in terms of broad trends we probably lag by about 18 months to two years since so just to come back to uh, you know the argument for using hedge funds and and uh, fund of hedge funds like like the one you run is that uh, mm -hmm. managers have the ability let's just talk equities uh, have the ability to short and, and obviously protect themselves against the downside there is obviously risk in that, mm -hmm. and the argument that I have with many people around using hedge funds is that, you know, if you can see big market corrections coming, well then surely you just sell out of your equity basket and sit in cash. Uh, what's your sort of take on, uh, you know, the real value added that that a long short equity manager, hedge fund manager, can bring to an investor's portfolio? Okay, so I, I sort of go back to one of the points I made earlier. I, I don't sort of argue it like that. So my view, if, if you have a view that absolute return is what you want, you can go out with a long mandate and that means that you must either be in bonds when rates are falling, you must be in equities when they're going up, or you must be in cash when everything else is falling. That's pretty blunt uh, and nobody can get it right all of the time n and neither can hedge fund managers. The real key to hedge funds is that by having more tools in the toolbox, i.e. being able to use derivatives, being able to use options, being able to short, they can A, make money in different ways when markets are not performing. So uh, going back to that analogy th uh, of the two shares, the market falls, a hedge fund still has an ability to make money. So I, don't, I, I wouldn't focus purely on, you know, can anybody get the directional call right? And so you know, if, you have it, you know, if you have the ability to short, are you going to get it more right? I, I just think it's a very simple... Uh, it's a simple analogy and I, I know that uh, you've got my presentation there. I always use the, the, the tree felling industry as, as an analogy and I say that 
you know, regulation around investments and the style of investments hasn't really changed in the last 400 years globally. Long and square is the predominant form of asset management. And 400 years ago, we cut down trees with axes. Five guys went into a forest and they cut down a tree with an axe. That industry's moved on where people go in with chainsaws and they're a hell of a lot more effective at what they do because they've got more tools in their toolbox. And I'll move to the negative and say, well, immediately people say, but yes, you know, hedge funds with the use of derivatives and leverage, it's, it's more dangerous. And I'd say, yeah, using a chainsaw to cut down a tree is more dangerous. You can cut your leg off. You need a professional to, to run it. But there is no doubt that having more tools in your toolbox than just being able to be long and square has more opportunity to make money, money and more opportunity to protect capital in, in, in intelligent ways.